Hey, good morning, everybody. Man, I'd just like to welcome you to Destiny Church here. Um, and, and whether you're watching on our Facebook Live or you're watching on the YouTube channel or watching on, on the local channel, I'm so thankful that you're going to be a part of this service. It's going to be a better service because you are. And, and why don't you just agree with me in prayer and we'll get right into worship, okay? Man, in Jesus' name, we just agree together this morning. I thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to worship together and that your presence is going to fill this place. You promised that when we worship. Thank you for that. And I, I just declare that everyone that's a part of this service is going to have an encounter with you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, join us in worship.
all the darkness will flee at your name. Light is flooding through at your name. Healing is here with your
thing that's so wonderful about praise, what we're doing here right now, is that God promised that he would inhabit the praises of his people, his sons and daughters. And so, so like right now in this place, there's a tangible presence of the spirit of Jesus Christ here. And, and if you're home, if you've been worshiping with us, why well, I, 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 uh, I, just, I just asked you to recognize there's a tangible presence of Jesus Christ right there in your home. And you know what, what that does for me uh, when, I, when I'm praising and, and the, the presence of Jesus Christ is there, I, I get direction. I get answers for decisions I need to make. Um, if I'm dealing with circumstances, why, why there's, a, there's a flip that'll come inside because I just flipped over into victory because the presence of Jesus Christ is there and, 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 it, and it changed. Uh, it, 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 the circumstance might not change yet, but you got to know it, you, you get victory inside first. Yeah. And then that changes the circumstance. And, and, and that's what praise does. You know, praise is simply giving a voice to your faith. And God responds to faith. And when you put a voice to your faith, the voice of praise, why God shows up. I mean, he's not a far off. He, he, the spirit of Jesus Christ lives right inside you. But his presence becomes tangible, and, and you win at that point. It's just a matter of time after that. Everything will get in line just like you want it to, but you got the victory in praise. And, and so that's why it's so important to us to praise and worship God, and it's, it's always a part of our service here at, at Destiny Church. And, um, and so uh, I just thank you so much for joining with us in that. I believe that's, that's the key to your victory also. And um, um, we're going to move on with the service now. Um, we, we, we got a message coming up ahead. Uh, first of all, it's, uh, it's my privilege to receive God's tithes and our offerings. And, uh, and you know, if you've, if, if you've entered into a partnership, a tithing partnership with God, I mean, that means that, that you take the first 10% of your income and you make sure that God gets that. And when you do that, and the reason you would do that is because God says, he promises, he guarantees that when you do that, first of all, he'll, he'll rebuke the devourer. In John 10, 10, why it says, Satan is a thief and he comes to steal. Well, he's rebuked by your tithe. He doesn't steal from you. And then God says that he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out on you a blessing so much you can't contain. I mean, it's God that's saying this. And, and when he opens up the windows of heaven, why, what that means is he's giving you access to everything he has. So, so, so that's why we tithe. And, uh, and so if, if you got tithes that you want to get to De Destiny Church, you're giving it to God, but it's going through Destiny Church. We, we use it to preach the message of Jesus Christ everywhere we can. And, um, and so our address here is Destiny Church 27871. Ashby, Minnesota, and the zip code is 503. So, so man, we, we appreciate everybody that's in a tithing partnership with God. And so, uh, man, we got a message here. We're going we're gonna to move on. Um, as we're getting the table up here. and um, So, yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, man, this morning, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you a story out of Scripture. And I, I purposely am keeping this in story form because this is something that happened in history, but I'm not telling you this because it's an event that happened in history. I, I believe that God handpicked every story he put in Scripture and because the, the results that these people got in Scripture, if you and I will do the same thing as they did, why, we'll get the same kind of results. And so uh, would you agree with me in prayer um, uh, as, as we get into this message and of course, um, as we're doing this, why, um, you know, it's, a, it's an important week ahead in, in America. We're, we're going to vote this week. And this is uh, every four years, of course, we have a presidential election along with, uh, along with senators and representatives. And so this is one of those years. And so, uh, so would you just agree with me as we pray together for our nation right now? And of course, uh, I, I should say this about voting too. Of course, I, I just declare that every Christian that's a citizen in America, that's eligible to vote, is going to vote, and they're going to vote the Word of God. I mean, why would you vote anything different? Because what God does works. 
And that's the only thing that works. So, 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 so let's agree in prayer for our nation. And in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, that in all of history, you chose us to live at this time and privileged us to live in America. I thank you for that, God. I, I, I thank you that, that, that our founding fathers, that, that they gave this nation to you, and they created the United States of America to make a place where people could freely worship you. And I'd just like to thank you also, God, that right from the beginning of our nation that we've been involved in spreading the message of salvation through Jesus Christ all over the world. Right from the beginning of our nation, our government even was funding it at that time. I thank you for that, God. I know you'll never forget that. And so, as your sons and daughters, we come to you today. And uh, we do, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand by casting our care upon you. We trust you for our future in America. We declare that, God, you are all-powerful, that we are in covenant with you, and that our future is safe in your hands. Thank you, God. Our best days in the United States of America are ahead of us. We believe you. We believe you of a place of unity, a place where even, once again, children could play unsupervised in town and be completely safe. I just speak that over this nation. Unity. In Jesus' name. And I, I'm just going to pray over the message here, too. In Jesus' name, I thank you that you promised that you would always follow your word preached with signs. And so we thank you ahead of time for signs following your word preached today. Positive change in the life of everyone that hears this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, I, well I'm over in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. title of this message is Praise Your Way to Victory. We're going to have fun in the Word of God for about a half an hour. Now, at this, what, what's going on in this story is that um, Judah was a very small nation. And what was, signi- what was important about Judah was that um, God had made a covenant with Abraham and the descendants of Abraham, and he promised Abraham that his son, Jesus Christ, would come through his lineage. One of his descendants would be Jesus Christ. The the greatest king of Judah, well, he is king of all of Israel, but by this time, Israel and Judah had separated, making it even smaller, was King David, and God had promised him that, that that Jesus, the Messiah, would be one of his descendants. So now here Judah was, a very small country, and three nations put their armies together to attack Judah. And, and, and what's historically significant about this is that this is the largest army, number of soldiers that have ever been assembled in history. Six million soldiers were in these three, in these three armies. And, and you might be asking right away, now why would six million soldiers come and attack this little nation of Judah? See, uh, people would fight battles a little bit different at that time, and what this particular army was doing, they were going to completely destroy Judah. It was like uh, we call a genocide today, uh, and, and, and you might ask, well, why is they doing that? What did Judah do? Well, Judah didn't do anything physically but we don't fight against flesh and blood. What the, what the thing that everybody didn't like about Judah was that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was going to come out of Judah. And if everybody in Judah could be destroyed, why there be no Jesus Christ? And see, that's why I'm making this point. I mean, this happened almost 800 years before Jesus was ever born. None of these soldiers knew anything about that, but they were motivated. See, the, the, the Bible says that, that, that we, we, we don't war against flesh and blood. We war against powers, principalities, wickedness in high places. And that's what's going on here. See, Satan wanted to destroy uh, the future Messiah, that he couldn't be born. He wanted to destroy his human ancestors so he couldn't be born. So he motivated these armies to come and attack Judah. So now, now, 
so now, at that time, why Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. And you might be saying, well, man, what kind of name is that? Well, see, remember, this is 2,800 years ago. Total different culture. Now, if somebody showed up in Judah 2,800 years ago and their name was Fred or, or George or Ethel, they'd think, what kind of name is that? But anyway, the king's name was Jehoshaphat. And, 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 and uh, people came and told him that this great army was coming. And now, see, like I said, God handpicked these stories to put in the Bible. Because if we do the same thing as these folks did, we get the same results. So I believe every principle, every detail in this story is important for us. Because, see, each one of us, we face personal challenges in life. <laughs> that's, just, that's just the way it is. You know, I, I, I wish I could tell you that you'll come to a time in life when there are no more challenges. But I, I, that just would not be true. When we live in this earth, why, we face challenges. And they might not be as big as a six million soldier army coming, but sometimes it seems that way to us. Sometimes the challenges that we face can seem impossible. And, I mean, every day there's people you know, around us. And if it's not us, why, it's people around us that are facing challenges that seem impossible. And that's why God put the story in the Bible. So I think each, each event that happened here is important. Now, when the report came to Jehoshaphat the king, he was responsible for this nation of Judah, that this great army was coming. I mean, of course, in the natural, there, there's no way. There's no hope. And these people are coming to kill everybody. And, and, and they weren't... Um, it's like we... Uh, they weren't polite at all about it. They, they do gruesome stuff back there that's not fit for us to talk about. But that, that was what was waiting for Judah. So what Jehoshaphat did when he got that report, it, it says immediately. And, and there's a lot of, there's four times the word immediately is used in this story. I'm, I'm taking this out of the, the Message Bible. But immediately, Jehoshaphat brought the nation together for prayer and fasting. See, when you fast, you hear from God. And he, he brought... Everybody that was a citizen of Judah, they came to Jerusalem, the entire nation. Of course, everybody was, uh, I mean, they were not complaining about that at all because they were looking for some rescue, some way out. So they were coming to Jerusalem to pray and fast before God. But Jehoshaphat did that immediately. He, he didn't come up with a battle plan. He, 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 didn't, he didn't go back home and, and cry about this a while. He didn't complain. Immediately, he called the people together so they could pray in agreement together. You know, God promises when we pray in agreement that he'll be there in our midst. And things change when God shows up. And so, this prayer that Jehoshaphat led every citizen of Judah in, it's, uh, he, he prays differently than, than, uh, than sometimes we do. This is a very simple prayer, and, and it contained three points. But now remember this. If we want the results that these people got in the Bible, victory, winning, good results, prospering, if we'll do what they did, why, we'll get the results that they got. And in, th in this prayer that Jehoshaphat led the people of Judah in, why, the first thing he said, God, you are all powerful. I mean, he didn't complain to God about this problem either. He said, God, you are all-powerful, so you can handle this challenge we're facing right now, this circumstance. And then the next thing, he told God that they were in covenant together. See, God had made a covenant with Abraham that, 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 that God would, would protect Abraham, that he'd prosper Abraham, and he made that same covenant with Abraham's descendants. He, 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 he had the covenant that his Messiah, his son, was going to come out of the descendants of Abraham. And so Jehoshaphat reminded God of this covenant. And, and boy, you know, for you, for you and I, I mean, God didn't lose any of his power in the last 2,800 years. He's all-powerful today. And if you're, if you're born again, why, you are in Christ, and you have a much better covenant than any of those people did. Because God actually recognizes you as being in Christ. He loves you and me as much as he loves Jesus. He'll do anything for you and me that he would do for Jesus. 
he, 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 that is our identity. So, so this is a covenant that cannot be broken. So that was the second thing Jehoshaphat did. And then the third thing he did, he said, you know, we're facing this great impossible army, but our trust is in you alone. He, he, he didn't talk to God about how this was going to happen, about, about uh, um, he, needed a, he needed a big army. He, need, he, he just said, God, we trust in you alone. And you know, that, that same thing is available to us. You know, you know, 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, why God makes this powerful promise. He said, anyone that wants to be promoted in life if you will humble yourself under my mighty hand by casting all your care upon me, I'll see to it that you're promoted. See, but that casting all your care upon me, that's what Jehoshaphat did. We're not trusting in anything else. He wanted God to know that their total trust was in him, and so they didn't have any worries. They cast their care on him. And, well, there's a six million soldier army out there. The army doesn't matter. God didn't lose any of his power because there's armies. So they were trusting in God alone. And then when, when Jehoshaphat did that, that was his prayer. I mean, just short and simple. God speaks immediately. That's the second immediately. The way God spoke, there was a prophet in the crowd and, and, and God spoke through this prophet, and, and God said this. He said, don't be afraid. You know, it's interesting in the Bible, whenever God shows up, or he sends an angel, or Jesus shows up, Holy Spirit shows up, he's got that same message. Don't be afraid. You know, fear is the opposite of faith. And boy, when you're facing an impossible challenge, that is not the time for fear. That is the time to listen to what God says. Don't be afraid. See, we have such an advantage over these people. We don't necessarily need a physical person to speak because God put everything he's got to say in his word. In fact, it's already been done. When Jesus rose from the dead, this has already been done. You know, we like to talk about the 9,000 promises in God's word for us, but actually, those are guarantees. God's already worked out our victory. But don't be afraid. Don't let fear get in the middle. Don't let fear uh, um, cross out your victory. Because God responds to faith. And so that's the first thing God said. Don't be afraid. He said, go to battle. And then he gave them instructions of where to lead their army to battle. And it's interesting. He, he, you know, if you look at the, uh, like a map of that land... He told them to go in such a way that they would never see that six million soldier army. Because see, that army was coming up, uh, what was in a valley, and they were coming up a hill into Judah, and God wanted to make sure that, that they never looked over that hill and saw the army. Because once again, the army had nothing to do with it. The three armies, <laughs> the six million soldiers had nothing to do with it. They were trusting God only. And so God directed them this way to meet that large army at the top of this hill in such a way they would never see them. I think there's something there. So many times when I run into a circumstance, it's just so easy for me to look at the circumstance. And the more I look at the circumstance, the bigger it gets. But you know, you just flip that around because I've seen it work this way and this is so much better uh, instead of looking at the circumstance, I start looking at God. Just like Jehoshaphat. God, you are all powerful. I'm in covenant with you. My, my trust is in you. And then when I start looking at God, why, he gets a lot bigger. And the circumstance gets smaller. And, and that's why God didn't even want them to see this army. And then the third thing God said in this short message, he said, you'll go to battle, but I'm going to fight for you. You're not going to fight at all. I'm going to fight. And man, I believe that's a word for us. If you're facing a challenge, if you're facing negative circumstances, you don't have to fight that battle. Jesus has already won it. You should get in, focus on the details of how he's already won it. 
And, and boy, what that does, it makes it easier to cast all your care on God because you're, you're immersing yourself with this fact that God's bigger than your circumstances. In fact, he's already taken care of them. All that's left is for us to receive what, his victory that he's already done. And so, so that was God's word to these people. And now here's the third immediately. As soon as that prophet got done speaking, why, what it says here in the Message Bible is that the people praise God at the top of their lungs. Well, the army is still coming. In fact, they're on the move right now, getting closer and closer across that valley to go up the hill. How could they praise God? They already had the victory. Because they had recognized that God was so much bigger than this circumstance. They had recognized the fact that they were in covenant with God and he never breaks his covenant. And they recognized the fact that they were trusting in God alone and he said he was going to fight their battle for them. And so, you know, it's a funny thing. In this whole story, there's never a place where it says somebody is afraid. One of the Judah people or Jehoshaphat there's never a place in that story that talks about them being afraid. Now, now, now just think of that. There's, there's, a, there's at least a couple million people in Judah and no one's afraid even though the next day they're all going to be killed. That, that's the natural circumstance. But see, that's how powerful it is to trust in God only. That's how powerful it is to know that God has already fought your battles is what it says in the word here. And so the people praised at the top of their lungs, and then the next morning they were up eager to go to battle. Well, why? Because they didn't have to fight. <laughs> they was going to see something major this day. There had never been, or never has been since, an army of six million soldiers, fully armed, coming to slice these people, their wives and their children, to pieces. And God was going to defeat them all, and they weren't going to have to do nothing. So it, it talks about them anxiously getting up. They couldn't wait for the sun to rise the next morning. That's what it says. I mean, it just makes no sense to us. But see, if you want to win, <laughs> very smart people lose all the time. That don't, they're smart, but they don't get their wisdom from God. Everything God does works. So, so... Everybody's there, and, and they're starting out into battle. And Jehoshaphat, the king, he makes this powerful statement. He says, believe God, and you'll, and you'll be established, and believe God's prophets, and you'll prosper. Today, we could just say, believe God's word. We believe God, and we believe his word, and we're going to win. Uh, that, that, that's basically what Jehoshaphat said. And when he said that, why the people got together, and they decided they were going to put the worship team in front of the army. Now, that's a strange thing because when they get to the top of the hill, they're meeting these people. Every one of them has a sword, has a spear, clubs, every sort of weapon, and the worship team isn't carrying any weapons. But he puts the worship team in front, and, and, and they, even, they, they, they choose to sing uh, Psalms 136. See, the Psalms is, a, is the, the worship song list for the, for the nation of Judah. And, and King David had written that Psalm 136, and what it says basically is, uh, praise the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. There, there are some other, some other details in there, but it mostly just repeats that sentence over and over again, and that's what the worship team was doing. Praise the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. But now here's another immediately. Immediately when they started to sing, the atmosphere changed. You know, th that six million person ar soldier army didn't hear a word they were singing. Because they're on the other side of the hill. And can you imagine the noise that six million marching feet would make? The dust that that, that, that would make. So they didn't hear this. But the atmosphere changed in such a way that it caused them to get into confusion. And 
they kill, those three armies killed each other. So when, when, when the worship team, with all of Judah behind them, got to the top of the hill, all they saw was six million dead soldiers that had just killed each other. Uh, think what that would look like. I mean, they covered the whole valley. And, and, and there they were. But, but I want to stress this again. Immediately when they started speaking, singing the word of God, these people fell into confusion and every one of their enemies killed each other. Six million were dead. And, and, and you know, the next thing it says is this. That they spent the next three days taking the spoil away from those six million dead bodies. For some reason, God had caused those soldiers to bring all their gold, all their fine jewels, and of course they had all their weapons, bring them with to war, and there was so much stuff that it took three days to gather it all up. But, but something else happened, and this is the important part. The, the nations around Israel had been, I mean, they were in constant conflict with the nations around them because those nations were trying to destroy them because the Messiah was going to come out of them. They recognized how God had won this battle, had fought this battle, and they, uh, and, and, and they were afraid of, of Judah after that. And besides, Judah was so rich and had so much weapons that that the, the youngest baby that was living in Judah, as a citizen of Judah that day, had nothing but peace and prosperity their entire lifetime. That had never happened before in Judah. So much so that, you know, God actually called that valley the Valley of Blessing. The, the valley where this six million soldier army was coming to destroy the nation of Judah, God work that around to where it was the valley of their blessing. See, isn't that what we're all looking for? Is that we want to leave a legacy so that our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren will experience nothing but peace and prosperity? Praise was the key for them to leave that legacy. Just like praise is the key for us to leave that legacy. You know, I, 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 once again, I didn't tell you this story as a historical account. Because the Bible is a living word. It's good to have history. A lot better to have a living word. You know, I, I, I really got, I, I locked into that story uh, the, the first of this year. Didn't even know why. But it's always been one of my favorite stories in the Bible because of the six million soldier army. That never happened before. And God just turned it around so wonderfully. And so uh, that's always been one of my favorite stories. But, but I locked into that story the first of the year. And you know, this year, I mean, you all know, you've all been living through this too. It's just crazy stuff. Pandemic, crazy division in the nation. And you know, what that whole thing is about is this next Tuesday we're going to have an election here that will determine uh, the future will determine our legacy, determine what our children and our grandchildren experience in life, our great-grandchildren. And that's what all that was about. We don't war against flesh and blood. You know, we, you know it's, so it, it's fun to get mad at people and point out uh, the wrong things they're doing and, 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 and all that and groups and that. But just like that six million soldier army, people want the destruction and groups want the destruction of America because they don't like that we're in covenant with God. <laughs> they don't like that we gave this, our forefathers gave this nation to God. And so we don't fight against people, we fight against powers and principalities, wickedness in high places. And just, and, and you know, it, it, it could look like, like uh, we have some impossible enemies, like, like we have an impossible situation. But just like Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah did, I mean, you need to recognize that God is bigger. Nothing's impossible for God. 
that God's on our side. In fact, sons and daughters of God, we're in covenant with God. A covenant he'll never break. And we won't break it either because our identity is in Jesus. And, and so, so it's this covenant is actually between Jesus and God. We're just the, the, the privileged recipients of it. And we, we need to say that too. We, we need to trust God only. You know, it's not our, our, uh, our political expertise or, or, or whatever you want to think that's going to fix everything. God only is going to fix everything. And then we can praise right now. Well, you say, well, how can how the battle's still going on? Yeah, but God's already given us his word. He said that his glory is going to fill the earth like the waters cover the sea. So that means what God has in mind is that his glory is going to fill America, our, our, our cities, our towns, our states, our counties, our entire nation. So we, we, can, we can praise God right now. And then the, the next thing God told to those people, w- w- they were to go to battle. Well, how do we go to battle? Well, you go vote on Tuesday. You know, more than a million American soldiers gave their life. And boy, how many were wounded and maimed forever so that we would have the privilege of voting in elections. And so, so, so you go and vote. And, 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 you know, if you're, if you're in partnership with God, why then you vote the word of God. The word of God is really clear. And you say, well, I don't, you know, I don't know about voting. I don't know about all these uh, candidates. And, uh, and, you know, in fact, I don't like any of them. So I'm just going to stay home. No, oh, no, no, no. See, let, let me tell you just really quickly about voting in America. You don't vote for a personality. You don't vote for a, um, a particular, um, uh, for the character of a candidate. You don't vote that. You don't vote even for the voting record of a candidate. Because in America, there's two parties. There's, there's only two parties that have a chance of winning an election. The Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And those parties make platforms that tell you what they believe and what they promise to do when you elect them. The, 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 the platform is just like it sounds. It's made up of planks. It's like standing on this stage and they have planks to the platform. And they, 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 this is very available. As it's, it's written down. If, 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 if you go on the internet, you can, you can go to the Republican Party and get their platform. You can go to the Democratic Party on the internet and get it, all that platform. And, 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 and so they, they're very clear about what the future that they want to build in America. And so every candidate you vote for, whether it's a president, a senator, a representative, um, if, they, if they're identified as a Republican, it, when their vote is needed on one of those planks, if there's a chance to pass a bill that lines up with one of the planks and their vote's needed, they're going to vote according to that platform. You know, they, they vote all the time and vote different than the platform, but only when their vote isn't needed. But when it's needed, they, they, they're going to vote that platform. Why? Because it's that party that got them elected. That, that's where the money comes from. So you know exactly what you're voting for, what, what a candidate is going to vote for. But, but, you, but you go and look at that online, and it, it'll be like a book, that platform. And you might say, well, I, I can't even understand these words let alone read this whole thing, but you, you don't need to. Let me make it real simple for you. There's one plank in each of those platforms that you can't, there's, you can't get away from this one plank. And it's in the Democratic platform, and it's in the Republican platform, and it's the right to life. And on the, on the Republican platform, I mean, it, it, it takes about a, it, they use a lot of words to say it, but what they're saying is that the Republican Party is going to protect the right of an unborn baby to live. Every unborn baby in America. And so, so, so that's what they um, are about. That's the future they have. On the, and it's day and night difference. Every one of these planks is that way. But this, like I said, this one you can't get away from. On the Democratic platform, why it says that they 
They support the killing, the murder of, of any unborn baby in America from the time of conception until the time that baby takes its first breath outside its mother's womb. And if something should happen and a baby would survive an abortion, why, by law, that baby needs to be killed, according to their platform, and they expect tax money to pay for all that. So, I mean, th these people are real clear about what they're doing. And in, in, in this year, 2020, see, they spent the last four years making these platforms, both parties. And, but this year, they, they added another sentence on there, another principle, and you'll find it on another page, and it says that it's illegal for anyone to say that it's not right to do that that it's not right to kill babies like that. And so it's very clear, and whatever, whatever office you're voting for, it's a Republican, and their vote is needed to protect life, they're, they're, they need to vote that way. They're going to vote that way. If it's a Democrat, and their vote is needed to kill babies, they're going to vote that way. And so, so you're a Christian here. You need to go vote. Because, and, and let me tell you why. If you don't vote against that platform of killing babies, you are just as guilty of murder as the doctor that killed that baby. You see, it's not scared girls that, that have been lied to all their life that kills babies. It's doctors that get paid by our tax money to do that. And so uh, you and I, were accountable if you're eligible to vote. And, and, and it's, it's, just, it, it's that simple. So that's what it means to go out to battle. But now, once you've done that, once you voted, here's something that Jehoshaphat did and the people of Judah, then they didn't say no more about it. They just said, man, praise the Lord for he's good and his mercy endures forever because the battle belongs to God. You, you done your part when you showed up for battle and you, did, and you voted. But the battle belongs to God. He's going to fight this battle. Once you vote and vote with God, you've entrusted the future of your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren to God. And he's well able to take care of their future. We don't need to complain. We don't need to wring our hands. We don't need to cry. Nothing. We trusted God only. And he's well able to take care of it. But then here's another, the third important thing. Man, get ready to collect as much spoils as you possibly can. You know, when a battle comes, when an attack comes, when a negative circumstance comes, I've trained myself from the Word of God to all I think about is what kind of spoils am I going to get out of this? And what I'm looking for is just what those Jew people from Judah got, peace and prosperity for their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. See, that's our legacy. Well, the band here is going to lead us in, in praise with a song, and, and, then, uh, and then I'm going to speak a blessing over you before we close. So pre please praise God with us. For we trust in our God.
And if you just would agree with me, man, we just thank you, Father God, that you are all powerful. We thank you that here we are, your sons and daughters, agreeing together in prayer. And we declare that we are in covenant with you and you'll never break that covenant. And our trust is only in you. We don't, we don't look to the north, the south, east, or the west. Our promotion comes only from you, God. And so for everybody that's been a part of this service, well, I just declare God wants to give you the desires of your heart. And if you'll praise him just in this same way, praise the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Why, well, you'll see those desires become reality because God loves you and he's more interested in your prosperity, in good things, your favor, good things coming in your life even than you are. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for prayers answered, desires of people's heart uh, being put into motion today because people came into faith and began to praise you. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, man, thank you so much for being a part of our service. We're going to be back uh, next week, same time, 10 o'clock. And we're just, you have a blessed week. Remember, you're in covenant with God. Thanks for being a part of this.